So, uh, Adam. Can, can you all can you all hear me down on the coast right now? I'm gonna try to. Okay, um, it doesn't look like uh, the uh, people on the coast is it either work today, but uh, for reference, if you're watching this video, somehow we got disconnected. Um, so I'm going to go over the lab, and uh, I will see how the uploads are doing. I still got 56 minutes. Made it. It's just processing. So it might take a little while to show up, but it's now it's just processing. But just fine. All right. Still uploading part of the UAS lecture. And another part of that. Okay. So um, today's lab, I, I call both of these lab four. One's the turn it in assignment. One is the. Uh, Um, data, and then here's the PDF. So today's lab assignment is georeferencing, uh, and uh, you're going to do basically two different uh, georeferencing uh, pro uh, projects. Uh, so um, you've got a number of uh, data sets. You've got a unregistered scanned-in image. In other words, this is an old aerial photograph. It was scanned in on a scanner. Okay? That doesn't have any coordinates associated with it, and you're going to register it. The next uh, data set are you've got Big Mar Road. This one does have real world coordinates associated with it. It's a GIS layer that represents roads. You're going to use this data to help you in the uh, registering of some of the images. Okay? So you've got, you've also got um, some uh, data that is uh, registered in a different coordinate system as the road, and you've got three different images that are unregistered aerial photographs. Now, part of the purpose of this exercise is for you to see that this registration process isn't necessarily perfect and works and creates a you know glorious, perfectly aligned image. But these images, I would say they're somewhere, if, if you had, you have like a range from, these images will perfectly line up when I do georeferencing, and these images will have some issues, uh, major issues. These are somewhere over on the right, okay? They're, they're going to register, but not perfectly, and so you'll, you'll see those RMSC errors uh, as you do that, okay? Um, so, um, they... Uh, they came from two different sources. One's from aerial photography. One's come from a, a scanned image. And uh, you're going to um, georeference them. And there's a video from the book author uh, that, that has some of the, the guidelines there. Uh, so what we're going to do first is open up ArcMap. Not Google search AMA. Arc. There we go. And the first thing that we're going to do is add the, um, the roads layer. The reason why this is a good workflow to add the uh, control layer first is that, um, remember, the first layer that you add becomes the, uh, the default coordinates that you're viewing all the other data in. Okay? So when you add it first, it will set the coordinate system for the view, the data frame. You can change that later, but it's just, I think it's a good workflow to make that, uh, to do it like this, okay? So when you add that, you're going to, um, 
you're going to force the data frame to be that projection. So I'm going to, oh, I haven't done, done I haven't finished downloading it yet. It's taking a long time to download because it is, it is large. I don't know if you, if you all noticed uh, that. I, I prepared this on my desktop, so I actually don't have this on my laptop. I should have downloaded this earlier, um, but uh, it's, it's going to download here. I've got eight minutes left. I wonder if I should go grab it off of my... Uh, anybody else already download it? Got it. I don't know if it would be longer to do it. And so the first thing that we're going to do is, uh, is register, it's a really simple project, we're going to register the uh, scanned in image. We're going to register the scanned in image to the, uh, the rows. Okay. If it copied, it did. Also, yours wasn't even connected to the internet, but I fixed that. To, uh, let's put it under C, temp, paste. Here's an image of a reference. Um, that's, that was taken. So what I'm going to do is add, sorry, it's so small on my computer. What's that? Um, I'll only add in the Big Mar Rose. So I'm adding in the Big Mar Rose. That if I click, you don't have to do this, but I click on layers, I can see that it's it's the coordinate UTM. So it, it forced the, the data frame to be in that projection. And the reason that that's important is the second step is that we're adding in the scan data, which doesn't have a projection associated with it, it doesn't even have any coordinates associated with it. It's as if I just scanned it in with my 5 bed scanner in the other room, which I didn't do, but uh, I did it, you know, maybe two years ago. All right, so now that's scanned in. Now, where is it, you might say? Well, it doesn't have any coordinates associated with it, and so ArcGIS assumed that it was in geographic coordinates and put it somewhere in space. If I hit the full screen, okay, it looks like I put it right there. That's, that's not where we actually want it to be. Um, so we're going to georeference it. We're going to move it into where it should be uh, in space. Okay. So uh, if we look back at the lab, which where did I go? Um, then uh, you'll see that that's going to be our target layer and we can follow through uh, with uh, the lab. Now the trick is identifying where uh, this stuff is in space. Sometimes it can even be rotated depending on the image. In this case it's not, um, but one thing that we could do is kind of zoom in here and try to identify features that are similar. Going slow. Yeah, so 
you can see this little like jog in the road is this little jog in the road here. And how this road kind of comes out on the end is this road coming out on the end. Okay. So there's, there's some similar features that I've just pointed out. Uh, here, let me go back out. One thing that is often helpful, so uh, actually before I get to one thing that's often helpful is, uh, let's see, where it is in the lab? Um, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, we're going to turn on the georeferencing toolbar. That's the next step in the lab. So you go to uh, Windows or Customize. We'll move these around each year, it seems like. Uh, georeferencing. Turn that one on. That's the one you're going to use. And again, you need to figure out why ESRI makes it look so crappy on Dell laptops. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do here is make sure that the target, if you have multiple images in here, this is a key to be a problem. I need to make sure the target is the one that I want to be the target. Because whatever the target is, it's going to adjust that thing in space. And it kind of messes it up. If it's not the one you want, you're going to mess up one that you don't want to mess up. Like if you already had one that was lined up. In other words, if you're trying to do an image to image, you had an image that was already in cord, uh, geographic coordinates or projected coordinates, and you wanted to take another image and line it up, it would be very important for you to make sure that you select the one that does not have the coordinates that you want as that one, or it's going to mess the other one up. You're going to have to re-download it if, you, if that's possible. Okay, so here it doesn't really matter because it's the only one that shows up. All right? So um, the first thing that I can do that's, that's often helpful but not always helpful, is I can zoom just to the rows, and then I can say georeferencing fit to display. And even before I add a ground control point, what that's doing is it's taking that image and it's moving and it's translating it over to where you're going to start. It's kind of helpful. It's like, it's like uh, pretend that this was actually a hard copy, taking it and it's just putting it in the middle of your desk. So now, you can start to line things up, and it just so happened, for, for you guys, for the benefit of you guys, for this one, it lines up pretty well. I mean, you can see this road right here that goes like that is this road right here. See that? So it's, it's making it easy, but it, it could be that there was lots of rotation or translation. And so like, you can imagine, what if this was flipped all the way upside down? And uh, then we have to start putting points in before it would flip it back over. But at least this one's set up really nice. But what I'm trying to say is it doesn't always look this cool where it's almost there. You're just putting in a few more points. Okay, so um, the next thing that you're going to do is start to uh, align the points that you see. Okay? Um, here, you can do a little bit of rotate. This is like uh, some manual adjustments that you can do. It's kind of walking you through. Like, let's say, the, let's say it was rotated all the way 360. You could, you could choose to rotate it manually. Okay? But this one's already set up pretty well, so I'm going to skip those for now and go right to creating the ground control points because uh, that's really where you start getting it more precise. Okay? So... Um, under georeferencing, uh, you can, uh, well, no, sorry. It's this one right here. This button right here starts the ground control points. So now I'm in the ground control point editor. See, I've got a little point guy. Now, it's very important that you always use the same order. And this is the order you're supposed to do it in. You first find the location in the target layer. In other words, in this case, the image. Then you find the same location, and you click that in the... Uh, non-target layer, in the, in the already coordinate layer. And you always have to use that same order. Okay. So I'm just going to start doing two or three rows. Okay, I'm going to go with this, this corner. So you see that little, uh, that little guy right there? Uh, that intersection is that intersection. I'm, I'm sure the lab points out a few, a few that you can do as well. 
So I'm, I'm, our, I'm going back to this tool and I click in the target layer first, so that's this layer, and then I click the same location on the map. Okay. And once it does that, you see how it kind of went, it moved, it did the translation for it. Uh, so it lines those up. Okay. Now, this road is obviously not perfectly drawn. Okay. But it's going to get a little bit better. You're going to see that, like I said, there's some just differences in the two data sets that can't be overcome just by this, this process. Okay, so now let's try to find another one. And I'm going to try to find another one fairly far away, like maybe uh, up here, so that it makes a bigger difference. So see how this road right here, it comes in right there. And so I'm going to click, I'm going to click that tool, and then click right at this road intersection, and then collect, cl click in this road intersection. Now it's going to collect, it's going to connect uh, those two points, and it's doing a fairly good job, and they're lined up, uh, and so it's adjusted it even more. You can see getting some good data. So now the points should be fairly lined up. I'm going to click uh, one more time on the middle of this road, and then the, this road intersection. And see, there's only three points, so it's still in those three points. They're still perfectly lined up. Now, once I get to a fourth point. I'm going to try to space this one out fairly well, like maybe right at that road intersection. Don't have any up in that corner. Okay, remember to click the image location first, then click the location in the map data. And okay, now you'll start to see there's a little blue line there. And the little blue line represents the, the difference, the best it could do to fit all four of those points, the difference between reality and what it should be because once you've done four points it can't fit them all perfectly so now if i zoom out I'll, I'll be able to zoom into any of the other three points and they'll also have little blue lines associated with them see how that little got this little blue line right here so it's off and if i bring up the link table which is this button right here make it bigger Then I can see, uh, actually I think I need one more point to get to RMSC. I thought it was just four. Maybe it's four to get it to start. Let's see what happens. Oh, there it is. Sorry, uh, just in the different versions of the software, they put it on the bottom versus the top. So that's the, R, the, the current RMSE value is 6.051484. Okay, so when it, when it asks you to report that, uh, You'll know what that is. Okay, so four is all you really need. Uh, putting in more often helps. Uh, particularly helps you identify points that maybe you should go back and look at and say, oh, that wasn't a very good ground control point. Because the, uh, the residual is the individual, uh, that's the individual um, problem. Okay, that's the individual contribution to the air. So this one's contributing less then this one's contributing the most. So I could go back and see if there was a problem with exactly where I put it. Okay. All right. Now when it's all done, go to georeferencing and rectify, and that's when it actually saves it out into a new file. Okay. And then the product, just like, this, just like last week's lab, the product will be a, um, a, a PDF of, the, the, of the, the finished data. So you're going to rectify this image, and then there's a set of three images that you're going to rectify basically to uh, an image like this. Right. Okay, um, any questions? I have to take off, but uh, Shaway can help you through. Does anybody have any quick general questions? How do you delete a point? Okay, so you can go into the link table here and uh, And I just deleted a point, so now there's no RMSE. You can right-click on these guys, I'm pretty sure, and delete them. Or just, I mean, it's not going to include them if you just uncheck them. Um, 
I thought you could delete them here. Maybe you can only delete. Anyway, if you if you delete them, it won't include them in the model anymore. I mean, if you uncheck them, I'm not exactly sure. I thought you could right-click to delete them, but unche unchecking them has the same effect as deleting them. Unchecking them from the from the list of the, of the ones to be included. Oh, here we go. Delete link right there. It's there. So I'm going to delete number three here. I just deleted number three, so four became three, and so on. All right, any other questions?